what he's talking about, don't you? Whoa, Come whoa, on, whoa, give us some of your wisdom. Joe's, what's going on here, Greg? You two gonna use those things or just stand there looking at it? What are you waiting for, Porco? Fire on, away! Hold on, hold oh, on. Oh, come on, he's disturbing the peace. Really... You blockhead, you mother... Joseph! Let me talk to him. Wait a minute. Let me talk to him. Joe, you've got to calm down and back off before this thing gets out of hand. Yeah, well, these flunkies need a lesson of manners. <clears throat> i got to take you in now. Don't you know that, Joe? Yeah, I know. The question is, do I let him use those things on you, or are you going to come with me as usual? I'll go with you, but I ain't going to like it. You never do. <laughs> huh. How long, Greg, before you you can't get here in time? How long before you see what the rest of us see? See what, Ira? That he is not worth the time nor the effort. That he's what's decaying this city. He's rotting it away. I've had just about enough of your inability to maintain the peace around here. All these people wanted was enjoy a nice walk around our fine town, and that fool comes and destroys it. Have a nice day, Ira. Oh. I will be placing a call to your superior, and believe me when I tell you that I will put an end to your short and so far very unproductive career in law enforcement. Oh. I hate these calls. Seems to be getting worse every time. I don't know how much longer he's gonna last. One out of one, go ahead. En route to detox with one on board. Mr. Devon. Copy that. Uh, en route from Highway 58 in Washington. Sick back here. Just be quiet back there, Joe. You're the one who put me back here. No, Joe, you put yourself back there. Yeah, you, you, you bitch, that way. <laughs> oh, giddy. Golden Peaks, the crappiest part of town. All those people wasting the government's money, huh? Enough, Joe. It's true, ain't it? Can't even mow the lawns. That's enough. Hey, Russ, what's going on? Hey, Officer Knox, they're at it again. Right behind the trailer. One out of one? Where's that other unit? What? How could you do that? Oh, you're such an idiot. He ain't the only one, neither. What? That's enough, sir. That's enough. Put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your head. Oh, who's the big man now, huh? Do you have any weapons on you? Anything you need to know about? Screw you! Oh, take that as a yes. I hope they beat you real bad. Okay, let's go have a seat. There, okay? Busy day. Yeah, unfortunately. Transport wants to take one of these two? I'll take two. Sure. Sir, I'm gonna get you up. You're gonna come with me. Get on up. 
You're gonna go this way, watch your step on the curb. Watch your step. Right this way. Well, we did not end up with Joe today. Fine with this one. I hate guys like that. He's a jerk. Hey, that's enough. Get in the car. Watch your head. Hey, what is the deal with Knox? Thinks he can save the guy. It's kind of a good thing he's trying though, right? Come on, let's get Ike Turner to his new room. Hey, Knox. Yeah? I have some more cases and files for you. How's he doing? I don't know. It's like we go out there doing our best to make things better and uh, some days it's hard to tell if we're making a difference. I mean, all the policies, the, the communication services this city has to offer. It seems like that we communicate less and we talk less than we ever did before. And take Main Street. All the improvements, the renovations, to all the roads, the buildings, for what? I know, I know it's all great. Don't get me wrong. I just wish there was a way to renovate some of the people in this town. Like I said, it's just hard to tell if we're making any difference, that's all. Maybe people just don't want anything different. Yeah, maybe. We could use some help down here. Pastor, you do some pretty good work. Thanks, June. I think it's coming along pretty nice. Yes, yes it is. So, tell me again how much I owe you for all of this. Uh, June, why don't we just call this helping out? I don't want uh, and I will not have any of that nonsense, young man. You have worked hard and you should get paid for it. From what I can see, you have more than earned it. Well, thank you. Come on. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, when you finish with the rest of the yard work, you come back and see me, and I will have a tall glass of my ice-cold, fresh-squeezed lemonade just for you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> wonderful work. Simply wonderful. Here, let me give you a hand with that.
Woo. <laughs> Thanks. Ben Cooper. Russ McKay. I'm the uh, manager around here. Oh, okay. Um, I'm uh, the new pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. Oh. So you've been doing some work on June's place? Yeah, I've been helping her out a little bit. Looks like you do great work. Thanks. Hey, uh, how much is she paying you? Uh, um, let's just say she makes a mean glass of lemonade. <laughs> I've had that lemonade. <laughs> hey, it was good to meet you, Russ. You too, Ben. Yeah, we'll see you. Thank you. Such a lonely man, keeping it quiet, and whenever he takes a fall, somebody takes his. All right, thank you. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Too. Sorry, Joe. You're short. How short am I? Well, it's 1019. What'd I give you? 1018? Really? Can't we just call it close enough? Come on, you fool! You're up the line! Sorry. Spill your booze. I'm sorry. Have a good night. You too. like this. Every time you or I take a drink of it, it's like we're doing it together, right? Come on. You. Oh, I'm sick of you. Yeah. You need to get out of here. I ain't going nowhere. You know, I'm calling the cops, and this Fine, time they're going to keep you. Since you're a moron, let me help you out with the number. It's 911. Hey, 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 I'm the pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. I'm new. Good for you. Move. Oh, whoa, whoa. What do you think is going to happen here? I'm going to teach this drunk a lesson. Wait, That's wait, what's going to happen. Wait, cockroach. Come right. on. Hey, hold look, on. look, look. If I can get him to leave, you don't have to punch his teeth in. Let's go for it. Hey, buddy. Ben Cooper. Joe. Hey, Joe. Good to meet you. Yeah, you a preacher? Oh, yeah. Among other things. You gonna tell me I need Jesus? 
Do you? I need to be left alone, you idiot. Okay, okay. All right, look, look. He said if you let him be, he would let you. Hey, be. I didn't start it, okay. man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. All right. You need to end it by walking away. Fine. I don't want to be here anywhere, Ginger. There you go. He's at last, right? Not really. He will be back. He always is. Good try, though. Welcome home, Ben. So you see, son, even though it's a small dot on the map, it's our dot. It belongs to us. We have to be responsible for what happens here. We've been given so much in terms of wealth and resources, and as part of that, we've taken up a charge to aid our city in becoming its best. Does that make sense? That's why my grandfather founded the Golden Trader Society with those businesses and folks. We want to continue to work to better our society and the surrounding community. When you grow up and take over the companies and the store and all our land, the responsibilities will then come to you. Yes, Mayor, I agree. It sounds like a great idea in theory. Who wouldn't want to try to improve that area? My only concern is what it might cost our fine people and how it might force further sacrifices to our well-established tradition and golden charm. Sure, sure, but how many other golden community mainstays will suffer if you follow through on this? Think about it, man. If you invest our hard-earned dollars on a run-down mobile home park that's stacking up health and safety violations and, and filled with helpless charity cases, next thing you know, others just like them will want a handout as well. It might be better to simply move on and restore some dignity to the area. Well, you have my thoughts on the situation, Mr. Mayor. And if you do decide to follow through on this, just keep in mind the considerable pull that myself and the GTS have. I would really hate to be in opposition to you. Well, good. That's great. I'm glad you'll be speaking further to the council about that. Fine. That's great. Well, thank you for your time, and we'll talk later. Uh-huh. Okay. Goodbye. Well... Let's just hope they change their mind. The mayor and his council, uh, despite their growing courage and their ever stiffening backbone, most likely won't risk losing our support over the issue. I hope not. It's true we're all given free will to make our own choices, but you know, what better way to show our devotion and faith in him than to use that free will to choose to follow his direction. I grew up here, graduated from the high school, went to the stores here. I spent years of my youth roaming the streets. And from time to time, I may have gotten into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> but my returning home after years in Portland it was not a choice Marie and I made using some rational thought process. We were led so strongly to this very place at this very time. We just chose to obey God's calling. To say that I know what that calling is going to be, that'd be a lie. And you know, since we're in church, I won't do that. <laughs> There's a burden on my heart. That's something I just can't explain away. I, I know there's a purpose for us being called. Maybe it's, maybe it's a place, maybe it's even a person. Oh, amen, preacher man, amen. <laughs> this your family? Where's your wife? <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, preacher. Hey, Joe. 
Hey, get your hands off okay. me. Okay, 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 calm down. Babe, maybe we can get him some coffee. I don't want no coffee. I brought my own drink. Thank you very much. Joe, come on, let's have a seat. Hey, I'm leaving, all right? You people are all the same. You talk and you talk and you talk, but you don't do nothing! I'm not your little project, all right? I don't need you and I don't need your God! Joe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah! Evening, officers. What can I do you for? Joe, we got another complaint. Really? For what? Public intoxication, danger to yourself or others. You can pick to me, Joe. Can't you just wait until I'm done? No, give me the bottle. Nope. <laughs> Come on, you can't even stand up straight. The heck I can't. Whoa! Joe, come on! Uh, there's a hole, right? Uh, uh, there's no hole. Uh, there's a hole there, a divot, whatever you want to call it, all right? Just give me another test. Come on, I'm not drunk. Come on, Bruno, give me one more test. Come on, I can pass. Give me another test. Give me another test. Come on. Fine, stick out your fingers. Touch your nose. Not a problem. I can't seem to find my nose. My these were just nuts. Turn around, put your hands off me. Joe, you're coming with me. Just go get knocked. I don't need knocks. I don't need knocks. Joe, get off of me. Stop resisting. I will take you, Joe. Don't tase me. Don't tase me. Don't tase me. Down, Joe. You get ready to tase him if he's going to continue. He's going to resist again. We got him. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just tired of this. That's understandable. What next? You search him. I'll call it in. You okay, Joe? Mm -hmm. Two out of one. You don't want in custody. We're gonna sit you up. You need to get my hat. I'll get your hat. Uh, Come on, Joe. One, two. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is Officer Knox. Uh, can I talk to the on-site manager, please? Uh, of course. One moment, please. Okay, thank you. Officer Knox, it's Dr. Allen. Hi, Dr. Allen. Uh, listen, I was hoping I could get some more information on Joe's condition. Uh, what, what, what can you tell me? Doctor. Okay, Greg. I, I can tell you that his blood work is very concerning. People that drink that much go into liver failure. Frankly, I'm surprised he's still alive. Listen, Greg. I know you care about him. If he doesn't stop drinking now, he'll be dead soon. 
really so. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, great. Attention, everyone. Have your attention. Attention, everyone. Uh, why don't we proceed and come to order? Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight to the Connected Neighbors meeting sponsored by the Golden Traders Society. Uh, we do have a variety of items slated for this evening, but I'd like to address an issue right off the top. I've just finished some research on the subject. Of course, I'm speaking of the growing marginal population. Let me just start by saying this. The Golden Trader Society has a, a long tradition of uh, community improvement and uh, dedication to economic, societal, and humanitarian enrichment. Uh, as many of you know, my great-grandfather founded the GTS, and it has served this growing community for many years. But I fear that we are losing our rich identity. Yeah, that's right. The findings I have in my hand indicate that the downtown businesses and the real estate market could suffer drastically because of this group's presence in our downtown street, which of course increases the police presence due to fighting and disturbances of the public peace. These marginal areas could drive down the real estate market. Now, I know you're probably thinking, of course, Ira is concerned about property values, but I tell you, this is not insider news, folks. Those people could and most likely will drag land prices down after we have worked so hard to raise them. Well, just think about all the work done downtown alone. Now, I don't want you to think I'm the only one that's concerned about this, so I have asked some other well-respected community members to speak tonight. Okay, Phil, won't you go ahead and stand up and address him? Uh, Phil, by the way, if you don't know him, runs one of the tour bus routes that goes around town. Thank you, Ira. My name's Phil Cole. Like Ira said, I run the tours in town. And after some serious complaints and coming to the realization that I can't avoid them anymore, I finally had to change my routes, avoiding parts of Main Street and the surrounding parks they have become too much of an eyesore, and I can't stand showing that to visitors. I mean, that's not who we are. The truth is, I'm not sure how it's going to affect my business. But it's something that had to be done. It's a sacrifice I had to make. After all, that representation of Golden just won't work. We have to protect our history and we have to try and get back to the things that made us great. Well, we understand why you did that, Phil. Uh, I think we're all sorry that you had to make such a sacrifice. Is there anything we can do to assist you in this time? Yeah. Get rid of them. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing that with us, Phil. Um, Let's see, Ed Mose has a statement for us. Ed, go ahead. Hello, y'all. Like Ira said, I'm Ed Mose. I own the shoe and leather repair shop down on Main Street. Well, it was last week one night when I was closing up shop. I headed out back to empty the trash at the bin, and one of them asked me for some change. I must say, in all my years, and I've been here for a few. <laughs> in all my years, I've never had to deal with a beggar at my back door, and I don't think I should have to neither. We need to clean this town up. <laughs> Isn't that your job, Officer Knox? To clean up this town? To rid it of all the bad elements? I'm sure, Ed, that Greg is doing all he can, but let's be honest. We need to take some actions ourselves as well. Yes.
three, I'm telling you, it was disturbing. Uh, they were totally tearing into each other. I can't believe people would even talk. I, I gotta go, babe. I gotta help somebody. Hey, Joe? Joe. Oh, please don't be dead. Uh, don't go, Johnny, don't go. Please, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I, I need an ambulance or something. Okay, sir, where are you? I'm in the park over off Main. What's your name? Uh, it's Ben. Cooper. Okay, Ben, what's the emergency there? I'm, I'm with a guy that's passed out in the park. Do you know who he is? Kinda. I, I think his name is Joe. No, I, I don't know his last name. He, he's drunk and passed out in the park. He, he needs some help. Hello? Yes, sir. Someone's on their way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I'm Officer Knox. How's he doing? I, I don't know. I, I saw him slump over, so I, I checked his pulse and called 911. Is, it, is an ambulance coming? Nah. He'll be all right. We just got to get him in to dry out. Do you know this guy? Yeah, it's Joe Devon. Wait, like uh, Joey and Johnny Devon? Yeah. You know him? I knew of them, them. Uh, they were older than me and always in trouble. I don't. I didn't Gosh. put it together. I'm here, Joe. Gosh, I need help. I got you. I know no, you. I need help. Okay, Joe. Okay, Joe. I'm gonna get you help. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Ben Cooper. Thank you, Ben. I'll see you around, I guess. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, what happens now? Well, like I said, I take him to dry out. Okay. Can I go with you? <laughs> no. Why would you want to do that? I just want to make sure he's okay. Listen, Ben. You seem like a nice guy. Don't take me wrong, but uh, who are you? Oh, uh, I'm the new pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. Uh, so this is some kind of community service thing then, huh? No. Listen, I can't take you with me. To do a ride along, you have to fill out all sorts of paperwork. Uh, yeah, ride along. Let's do that. Meet me at the station then? Okay. How long? Are you sure you want to do this? Give me 30 minutes then. Okay, I'll see you there. I mean, I'd probably faint. No, that's not true. You wouldn't faint. I might. No. Wait, speaking of. Hey, honey. You okay? You're not calling me from jail, are you? Ben? Ben, what'd you do? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Do you, do you remember that guy Joe that came to the church that day? Uh, yeah. Kind of hard to forget. True. Well, he was he was passed out in the park earlier when we were talking, and and he wasn't doing well. And then and I had to call nine one one, and so I did. And then and then the officer that came out, his name was Greg Knox, and I, I just feel like I need to spend some more time with him. Is all. So uh, I'm at the police station, and and. I'm going on a ride along. <laughs> you know, you never cease to amaze me. <laughs> All right, just be careful, Ben, please. I cannot wait to hear about this when you get home. You know I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Bye. He's just calling to tell me that they had a call 911 for this guy in the park, and now he's at the police station and he's going on a ride along to talk to the officer more. What? Yeah, 
that's my bin. Unbelievable. I gotta be honest. I'm surprised you still came. Why's that? Well, Ben, we get a lot of pastors, uh, a lot of religious types that come through here that say they want to make a difference, when really all they want to do is prop themselves up, and maybe for a better position. <sighs> they like the prestige of being a, a do-gooder. Is that what you are, Ben? A do-gooder? No, I, I just want to know what's happening in my community. All right, then. You're going to see it. You're going to see it all. <sighs> what happened to him? Joe? Yeah. That pastor is a long story. We've got an entire ride along, right? <laughs> you knew his brother Johnny. Yeah, I knew of him. Well, the two of them, like they're joined at the hip, they're inseparable. It came from a really rough home. Uh, really bad situation. And they... They figured, why stick around there when they could leave? So they, they did. They got jobs, they worked hard. But, uh... Joe was especially bothered and haunted by what their folks had put them through. The way he would escape was into the bottle and ended up taking Johnny with him. Joe would get drunk, pick fights, do all sorts of crazy things. And Johnny was right there by his side. Then the uh, accident happened, and what accident? I was a responding officer. When I arrived, I uh, saw Johnny and Joe just standing there, helpless. They had been drinking, and. Uh, Johnny never saw her. They hit a pedestrian. The young girl just walking home. She had died before I got there. Johnny ended up uh, doing, doing some time. And uh, when he got out of prison, he got a last chance. Worked with Joe on uh, the lawn crew. He stayed clean, you know, for a pretty long time, but uh, something, uh, something triggered him. Johnny was out back on the job, a job that he and Joe had been working on, and uh, it was a summer day. It was an especially hot day. Like I said, something set him off. Uh, who knows? And uh, took the gas caps off and started started huffing up, inhaling the fumes. Joe finished up and went looking for Johnny. He went around back, and that's. when he found his brother's body. Ooh. 
That's rough. You know, Joe, he, he might have been a bit of a troublemaker, but man, he loved his brother. The day that Johnny died, Joe just lost it. He, uh, he was gone. I've been trying to keep him out of major trouble ever since. So, um, so you've been on the force a while now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been around a while. I've seen a lot of things. I bet you have. Here we go. One out of one, go ahead. Not surprising. Copy that. En route. Just remember, you wanted to see this. anything like that. Especially oh, yeah. faster. <laughs> Where are we off to there, Twinkle Toes? Church? Meet your pastor. It's a good thing you guys showed up when you did. I was afraid I was gonna have to get involved. Really, Russ? <laughs> I find it hard to believe that you would uh, step on a spider, let alone use that thing. Well, now, it depends on the spider. I mean, have you seen those guys with the fangs and the legs? Nasty business. Man. Kind of like it when you guys just showed up once a month. Now you're showing up once a week. I hear you. Two item one. We have two in custody. Is that any weapons on you? Mm -hmm. We're code four. Did you get him, huh? Stop. Get up. Get up. Very nice. I'm gonna take the runner in. We'll clean up things here. Thanks. Picked a heck of a night for a ride along. <laughs> now you get to see the inside of a jail. <laughs> the adrenaline will wear off soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, that was a heck of a body slam you put on him. Dumb, <laughs> but it's still a heck of a move. Yeah, well, I don't think my wife would approve. <laughs> Well, I can't speak for your wife, but, uh, thank you. You sure you want to keep going? Yeah, I need to see us. All right. 
But no more of that John Wayne stuff, all right? Here you go. So it seems to help me adjust to the long nights. Uh, the realization that it's <laughs> eight in the morning. Thanks. You bet. I don't know, Ben. Finally come to the decision that the best I can be in this community is a, is a voice. You know, try to help out where I can aid others when I come in contact with them. Greg, I, I don't know how to say this, but there's something seriously missing from this community. Yeah. <laughs> Neighbors. Wait. What did you just say? I said neighbors. Wait, what do you mean by that? Ben... Seems like people have gotten selfish, you know? It's all become about me and mine. People used to be neighborly. They used to help each other out whenever they could, you know? They were good neighbors. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I say something to amuse you? Uh, no, 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 it's, it's so simple, it's sad, really. <sighs> I'm sorry? Thank you, thank you. I gotta go, okay, I, I, I gotta go, but I, I gotta go, but I'll catch you later, okay? What the heck was that? <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> Here we are. Again. <laughs> you never left me. Even when everyone else did. You were always there for me. <sighs> I love being your brother. <laughs> the way you looked up to me. I let you down. I don't know what to do anymore. I, 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 there ain't nobody here to talk to me like you did. <sighs> I messed up. Should have been me locked up. Should have been me. <laughs> this thing. <sighs> you were the better one. You were so smart. And that smile. you so much. <clears throat> I guess this is it. Last drink, huh? Thank you.
<laughs> Good bright, little brother. Hey, Joe. How you holding up? <laughs> I've been worse. Yeah. Think I was there. <laughs> so, uh, what the heck's going on? How much longer I gotta be in here? I hate being here this long, you know? Joe, I need to, uh... I need to talk to you about something. Okay. Do you remember asking me for help? It's a little fuzzy, but... Uh, Joe, <laughs> this is it. What, holding me a day or two more? No. No. Uh, I found a program. It would go into effect the next time you were picked up drunk. And it wouldn't let you be released when you are sober. Instead, you had to go before a judge. A judge for what? It's a statute. A statute that says... Uh, if there's enough evidence, a judge can order a person into a treatment program against their consent. It's either go into a program or go before a judge. I wouldn't go to jail for it. I'd beat you so bad right now, you son of a... How could you do this to Joseph, me? Joseph, please. Do you remember asking me for help? Yeah. This is it. I put this affidavit together. It has all our interactions. It has a report of all your contacts with the other officers, with businesses. There's enough here to force you into a program. Joe, I... I don't want to see you end up in prison like your brother, Johnny. I don't want to see you end up dead. I'm not doing this as Officer Knox. Don't you get it, Joe? I'm doing this as your friend. Go ahead, go before a judge. Have him strip all of your choices. Or you can choose to go into a program. It's, it's up to you. Did you know he liked to paint? No. I didn't know that. He was really good, too. I bet. Well, how long do I got to be in it, the, the, the program? I mean, how long would it last? About a year. But Joe, there's a chance for off campus living in a group home. There'll be work options, though. There'll be regular meetings. They'll be counseling, Joe. I'll, I'll do it. I'll enter the program. I'm proud of you, Joe. I'm real proud of you. I'll be back. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? 
Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. We as a church know and strive to meet the first commandment. And we love him wholeheartedly. But I've got to be honest. We're not very good at the second one. I've spent a lot of time thinking about what type of pastor I should be and, and what this congregation should look like. I've been carrying around a burden. Just this sense that something more was needed by me and quite frankly by all of us. You see, I don't want to pastor just this church. I want to be a pastor to this community, to step outside the church walls and go beyond programs and outreach ministries. I want this church to look like our community, but with one major difference. That we become great at the second commandment, the second greatest commandment. to love our neighbors as ourselves. It's time. It's time that, that our actions speak louder than our words. It is time we become the golden rule. Okay? Yes. Uh, fine, thank you. Please continue, Warren. Okay. So like I was saying, what the mayor and the council is suggesting is to provide the park with funds to upgrade the living standards. You know, roofing, heating, AC, plumbing, basic stuff. The mayor wants to try and avoid shutting the park down and putting more people on the streets. The park has some pretty serious violations. I checked, and the city recently sent a letter with some deadlines. What do you think? I think to spend a single dime on a property like that would be a waste. Not to mention it's fast becoming the first choice of the very element that we're seeking to get rid of. If that property were mine, I would level it, turning into something useful. Unfortunately, we can't exactly say that now, can we? What we need to do is find a way to get rid of that park. Until then, we need to buy some time. Maybe we can suggest to the council to allow us to do some research and come up with some other options to improve that area. Okay. I like that. What are the options? I'll come up with something and let everybody know when I have it. Now, I should get back to preparing for our meeting tonight. All right. I'll see you later. Thanks, Warren.
Hey, Russ. Faster? How's it going? <sighs> Back for more punishment, huh? Oh, yeah. There's a lot to be done. I just, you know, figured I'd lend a hand. Yeah. Hey, uh... How much are you charging these days? Sorry. No, that's okay. Russ, um, something you want to talk about? Oh. <laughs> well. You, uh, you got a minute? Sure thing. Okay. okay. Hello, Mr. Northrop. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Right this way. Make yourself comfortable. Can I get you any coffee? No, thank you. All right, I'll let Mr. Johnson know you're here. What'd you find? Well, some uh, pretty interesting stuff. Did you know that this park is actually one of the oldest parts of Golden? Uh, the estimated value of the land, right around a million dollars, as is. It's owned by a private party, out of state. It used to be a place for travelers in the early 1900s, a site for some rallies, and a former mayor once lived at the park, actually. I see. I don't know uh, what else you might want from me on this, but the property is not for sale. I know it's not for sale yet. What I'm looking to do is separate the park from the land. I, I don't know if I follow. I want to get rid of the park, Don. I'm tired of driving by it. I'm tired of the rundown side of it. It's time for it to go away permanently. I, I don't know what you want from me. I, I, I can't do anything illegal. I don't want to do anything illegal either, Don. It's time we move in, provide a solution, and do the right thing, despite the park owner, the tenants, we? the city, or any... Yes, Don, we the Golden Traders Society. We're gonna swoop in and save the day and turn a historical mistake into a monument of good. Look, we could uh, expand the school. We could build some much needed housing. We could even open a park dedicated to our rich history. That is, if we make the bold move. I don't know, it just seems a little conniving to me. I don't know if you have what it takes to be my agent anymore or not, Don. I'm afraid I'm have to consider finding someone else to manage all my properties. So, what are the things that have to be done? It's 
a pretty long list. Ben, without that funding from the city, my owners don't stand a chance here. I mean, we're talking minimum wage. Elderly folk, family, families. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know how we're gonna do this. Russ, what, what can I do to help? <clears throat> well, I was hoping you, you might wanna do some of the work. I've seen the way you care for June and, uh, I don't know, something inside me told me to ask. You know, you got a lot on your plate. You got your church and you got a table to put food on. I mean, it's, you know what? Russ, look, I'll tell you what. Let's just start by looking at some of this stuff. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Hey, we're neighbors. <laughs> hey, hon. How you doing? Ben, what's on your mind? Russ, um, over at Golden Peaks, mm -hmm. he asked if he could talk with me. And um, I thought maybe he had some questions about church or something. And he shows me this list from the city. It's a letter saying that the tenants over there are facing some serious violations. Mm -hmm. And then he's got this whole list of fixes that need to be done. Mm -hmm. He asked if I'd be willing to help, you know, fix the trailers and stuff. And so he showed me around and I mean, there were some serious issues with some of them. I mean, like, like roofs and rotted decks and paint and windows and plumbing and heat, uh, yard work. <laughs> just, that's just what we could see. I mean, I can't imagine if we looked hard enough what we'd find. It's just a, it's a long list. Well, that's a lot of consistent work. I mean, you can do all that, right? Yeah. What? What's wrong? I thought that would be a good thing. Marie, I don't think I'm supposed to charge. Wait, what? Why would you charge? It feels like the right place to start being a neighbor. Honey, that's a lot of work. Who's gonna pay for that? You've got labor, you have materials. I mean, where, how do you start something like that? I don't know. Okay, I wanna see it. What? No, I wanna see it. I wanna go over there right now and I wanna see it. Okay. Okay? Okay.
We can't charge them. But we are doing this. This is right. This is... This is right. And we can make a difference here. Now. Now what? I don't know. I mean... It's not like they make a playbook for this. Well, we need one. What we need is an army. All right, uh, let's keep this moving. Uh, next up, we have a new speaker, um, Ben Cooper. All right, Ben, go ahead. Well, uh, <laughs> Some of you might know me or, or remember me from a younger age, but um, I'm Ben Cooper. I'm the pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. Uh, I'm not here tonight as a pastor, more like a neighbor, on behalf of a neighbor. Uh, Russ McKay, the manager at Golden Peaks, that's the uh, mobile home park over on 3rd. Uh, he just received a laundry list of fixes that need to be done on the trailers there. And, and I was talking with him, and, and one of his major concerns is that you know, since the park is made up mainly of low income, affording these fixes is a huge stretch. So I thought I'd come and ask for some help. Now I can do some of the work, but, but it'd sure be great to, you know, have some, some extra hands and, or maybe some donations until financial relief comes from the city and the neighborhood grant program. Now I'm thinking, you know, going over there every Saturday, starting this Saturday, and we'll just work on whatever projects we have the funds for. Uh, I think we'll start with the roof. Excuse me, Ben. I apologize for interrupting, but that park is pretty far gone, is it not? Well, what do you mean by far gone, sir? Well, I'm very familiar with the situation over there. I have done some research on my own, and honestly, son, it might be better for you to let this one go and try for another area. Um, excuse me, sir. I, I hope I'm not being rude, but, you know, there are elderly folks and, and families and people just trying to get by there. If, if, if we don't step in and help, then they can end up on the streets or worse. I, I can't imagine anybody would want that. Look, Pastor Ben, there are several organizations uh, already in place to aid those who seek it. Uh, what programs are you referring to, sir? Well, Reverend Rick here has a food pantry out of his church. And Franklin, his nonprofit, works with other service providers and organizations to bring projects and volunteers together. Maybe you could seek their advice on maybe where would be a better place for you to get involved? Uh, sir. Ira. You can call me Ira. All right. Ira. I've been to those sites and I've made some phone calls. And all I've learned is that I need an appointment or uh, their services are not easy to access. Now, I'm not looking to start a nonprofit or some organization. I just want to help my neighbors fix up their homes. Well, Ben, I'm just telling you that you will not find assistance here. Look, I know you all have had some concerns with the marginals of the city, but I thought if I brought a way to keep people from becoming homeless or a way to help out, you might step up. But this reaction, I didn't see this coming. Can, can you tell me why you're so quick to dismiss this? Because, young man, it, it's Ben. You can call me Ben. Because, Ben, this group of individuals has managed to decay our cities by infesting our neighborhoods and draining our resources. Now, the GTS and other concerned citizens of this fine community are committed to the betterment of the city, not the encouragement of further rot. And as such, it is our responsibility to lead us away from further damage. What damage are you talking about? What damage? The damage done when those people walk the streets, beg for money, yelling at patrons, drunk. But what about when reckless behavior costs someone their life? I will not tolerate this cancer to spread any further. And those people are this city's cancer. They are our public enemy number one. Public enemy number one? Do you hear yourself right now? There could be rapists and murderers and child molesters out there, and you're concerned with a few people trying to find a warm place to stay and some food to eat? You want an enemy to fight? How about poverty, not the poor? Will that be all? No! That's all I have to say here today. 
I'll be at the park at 8 a.m. on Saturday if anybody would like to help. Thank you for your time. Hey, Ben, Ben, wait. You okay? Greg, I cannot believe that just happened. There's no way they're that ignorant. Listen, I... Uh, hey. Hey, Art. Hey. I just want to say, man, I agree with you 100%. I want to help out if I can. You know, I, I own Smith's Harbor right down the street. I'd love to take a look at that list and see how I can help out. <laughs> you know, I also know some guys that can swing a hammer pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say, uh, come by tomorrow, take a look at that list, and we'll put something together for Saturday. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, bro. Thanks, All bro. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both know that girl is checking me out, all right? Okay, bro. Whatever gives you the confidence to sleep oh, at night. Okay, okay, yeah. Hey, give me a drink then, all right? Whatever. You know, maybe she's into short guys. Yeah? <laughs> all right, let's go. Give me the keys. There you go. Take them. They're right there. Come on. We'll take them. Whoop. Come on. Whoop. You're we'll not take driving. Them. Give me yeah. the, you want the keys. Whoop. Whoop. Look at yourself. You're not driving. <laughs> the heck I ain't. Yeah, you're in great shape to drive. Let me yeah. have a drink then. Hey, spirit. Oh. Hey, man. Too slow, bro. Not cool. You know, I'm older and I should be driving. Yeah, well, I'm taller. Get in the truck. <laughs> All right. John, Peter, Devin, you give me those keys right now, young man. Shut up. Hey, uh, it's Joe. Hey. Uh, look, I, I need to get out of here. Any chance you could help me out with that? Actually, that sounds really good. No, really. I, that'd, be, that'd be great. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. I do. I'll, I'll just be ready whenever, okay? Thank you. We just keep getting bigger and bigger, don't we? Pretty soon we're gonna need a name for this band. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Art. Hey, man. Looks like Steve brought a new guy. Steve, good to see you, buddy. Hey, Ben Cooper, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so you know how you're always talking about being a good neighbor? Yeah. What about the Neighborhood Project? 
How about the neighborhood rehab project? <laughs> Joe, it's good to see you, brother. I've heard you're real handy with fixing stuff, too. Glad to have the help. I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> Great. All right. We're wasting daylight. Let's get to work. Show you something. Oh, Russ. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you said something the other day that gave me an idea. Okay. You said God uses us like instruments. Well, I'm a tool. I'm a tool. Huh? <laughs> I like it. Didn't get the petition signed. Why not? Because they've already donated to the project. And Mike's crew, can you guys raise your hands? Great, all right. You're gonna be over at the Burgess place working on her front porch area. Uh, it's on the north side of town, but we're gonna have trucks running back and forth with supplies if you need anything. Any questions? Great, here we go. On three. One, two, three. Ben? Yeah. You sure you want me to do this? Hey, Joe, you're ready. I mean, you can handle the work, right? Oh, the work ain't the problem. It's, it's the team. What do you mean? I don't know how to lead nobody. <laughs> Joe, uh, leadership isn't telling people what to do. It, it's just inspiring them to do what they already do well. You've been here every Saturday for the past two months. And I've heard about your service at the program group home. You know, it's one of the reasons I was glad they let you work release with us. Joe, you're not that guy anymore. It's time to go be the better guy. So what are we 
Uh, Dan? Hey, Joe. So glad you're here. We don't even know where to start. Well, we I was I was thinking that we'd start with those weeds down there, and then we'll just work our way back. If that sounds yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Lead on. Show us how. Oh, hey, Greg. I didn't think you were going to be able to stop by today. Ben, I came to bring you this. What's this? It's an official letter from the city. It says they had to investigate some complaints and a uh, petition that's been going around some of the neighborhoods. Ben, they may have to shut you down. They have to investigate our permits. <laughs> Greg, you know we got all the right stuff. Can they really do this? They already did. I thought the city was on board with what we're doing here. They were. They... It, the city loves this project. You know that, Ben. But they still have to investigate these complaints, and they've got to give that petition its due process. Ben, it's not about the city. It, it's about... The IRA and the GTS. Yeah. All right. What can we do? At this point... Not much. They'd have to stop that complaint and they'd have to uh, cease with that petition. We both know that that's not going to happen. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to Art's place to get some paint. I'm going to paint that fence right there. <laughs> then? I'm gonna go home and pray about this with my wife. Can I join you? What's got you in here? I don't know. I just I can't seem to wrap my mind around you know, why people are the way they are. Wow, that's that's a pretty deep thought. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been working with this ministry delivering bread and uh, been going to this apartment complex for months and, and finally seeing some signs that things are turning around. That's great. Well, today the apartment manager comes to me and just tears into me. For what? For bringing the bread every week. He said, uh, he said it was trespassing and next time he's gonna call the cops. So, what's got you in here? I don't know. I, I guess I just thought that maybe he'd give me an answer in here. You know, Ben, Learned the truth a long time ago that despite all our efforts to try and love others and try to do the right thing, the reality is everyone's been given the right to choose. Unfortunately, some choose not to see. But I mean, what does that even mean though? It means that even though you're doing great things with the bread and those people down there are starting to make changes, even though you're making a difference, he's chosen not to see it. I mean, why? Could be anything, but I found that most times it's, they just can't get past their own hurt. So, I mean, I, I need to find out what his hurt is and, and help him there? And that, Ben, is the second biggest truth I've learned. Sometimes they don't want your help. How am I supposed to know the difference? You don't. You just keep on loving them and keep on working until they either tell you to stop or they let you in.
Hey, what are you doing under there? I fix shoes, I don't bake bread. Get out of there, you bum! Hey, back up. Sir, I need you to come out from behind there. Bruno, Bruno, let me talk to him. Just, just give me a minute, all right? Hey, how you doing? It's Joe. Look, man, uh, you're gonna wanna come out of there, okay? Look, man, I've been where you're at, you know that. I know what it's like to be hungry. Yeah, I used to wait up back of the diner just hoping for some scraps, you know? It's tough, man, ain't it? Walking around, thinking that everybody hates you. Yeah, and sooner or later you start thinking, well, well, maybe they're right. Maybe I ain't worth nothing. But these guys, they ain't like that. Had to deal with me what? At least once a week, huh? <laughs> they're just doing their job. You know, protecting people, keeping the peace. And I was just making it worse for myself. And so are you, all right? Look, man, you need to come out here, okay? Not because they're gonna make you. Believe me, that's gonna suck. <laughs> but, because it ain't too late to change things. It ain't too late to, to turn things around and make it better. Look at me. God knows if I can do it, anybody can. Why don't you just come on out? All right there, buddy? There you go. Thanks, Joe. I'm just glad it's not me this time, huh? You're good. Real good. Thanks. Hey, you got this? Yeah, I'm good. Joe! Hey, where are you heading? I'm off to the group home. It's great. I tell you what, wait a second. I have Officer Clay take the transport unit. I'll give you a ride. <sighs> no, Joe. In the front seat. Hey, Ben. Hey, Greg. They have some pretty good coffee here, don't they? They do. Hi, hey, Julie. How are Officer you? Knox, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Good. What can I get you this fine morning? Uh, how about another cup? Okay. See anything good out there? How about some pancakes? Sounds good. Pancakes and a cup of coffee? Would you like a warm-up? Yes, ma'am. Sounds good. Thanks. So, what's up? Well... I know what I'm going to do. About the letter? Yep. What's that? I'm going to the next Connected Neighbors meeting. Confront the problem there. Whoa, that's, uh, that's pretty bold. I've talked with Marie and Russ about it. I talked with Joe. I, I, I've prayed about it a lot. These people are ready for this. Greg, there's a real sense of community for the first time in a long time around here. We just have one last obstacle to overcome. The Golden Trader Society. The Golden Trader Society. Here's your coffee, Officer Knox. Thank you. Ready for a refill? Sure. Is there anything else I can get you? It's good, thanks. Ben, I'm with you. What do we need to do? Thanks. Here's what I'm thinking. Warren? More reports for the meeting tonight? Yes, I have some information on Golden Peaks. Why? Well, I think you're going to need it. 
Why? Because I think the whole town's in there, Ira, including yeah. Ben Cooper and, um... Well? And Joe Devin. Folks, let's get this meeting started. Well, it looks like a full house tonight, and I can only imagine it has something to do with the first name on the docket. So, uh, Pastor Ben, the floor is yours. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, thirty two, twenty nine, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, forty nine, forty one, forty two. Those aren't just numbers anymore. Those are addresses of homes at Golden Peaks Mobile Home Park. You, you've all heard the saying that the difference between a house and a home is love. I've got a deeper understanding for that now more than ever before. When I sat down with Russ, the manager of the park, I didn't know this community was capable of such love. That individuals could set aside their status or position in society to love a 20 by 90 trailer into a cherished home. Only a group of people willing to put others first could start a movement that's poured out of Golden Peaks and carried to other parks and locations around the city. Other buildings turned into homes. The transformation of buildings has been impressive, but not as big as the transformation of us as people. For one day, there's no rich, no poor, just people. For one day, we choose to put others first. We choose to live the golden rule. Now, I know that there are some of you who are hesitant to explore a new way of doing things. That fear of losing the past has uh, crippled you from moving forward. I'm here to show you today that golden does have a rich past, but it doesn't have to disappear in its future. I've asked a few folks to come today to share their story with us. But Pastor Ben, we're on a tight schedule. There's not room for story time. Let him, let him go, Ira. Thank you, Warren. I'd like to have uh, Russ share a few words and uh, then a couple homeowners from the park. Russ? <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, like Ben said, my name's Russ McKay. I'm the uh, manager over at Golden Peaks. Uh, I've been going on 20 years now. Uh, when Ben asked me to share, uh, I got to be honest, I was thinking, no way. I mean, the thought of speaking in public, I mean, <clears throat> well, then I thought about what all Ben's done and all the volunteers, and there was no way I could stay silent. So here I am. I won't be long, I promise. I was at the point of hopelessness when I went and asked Ben for help. You see, I, I usually do all the maintenance myself around the park, and well, with the, with the trailers getting older and, and Russ getting older, and and the cost of living and renovations going up, well, that, that put the tenants and, and me in, a, in quite a pickle. And uh, then I got this letter from the city with a list, a long list of violations that needed to be repaired. And 
it was a long list that could lead to the closing of the park if we didn't address them. Well, I asked the city for some help, and they said they'd do their best, but, uh, you know, these things take time. So, meantime, I'm still responsible with all these violations, and uh, it's a tough load. Fast forward to today, and we've got 10 things left on the list to do. And just found out this morning that we have an approval to extend the deadline. <sighs> you know, this all happened because people like Ben and all these folks around the room caring about their neighbors. I've always said, being poor isn't a matter of the wallet. It's a matter of the heart. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, up next, uh, I'd like to invite the Browns. Hi, I'm David and this is my wife, Elise. We don't have much to say except thank you. Thank you for all the people who came to our house and not only worked on our home, but took the time to get to know us. It all started when David lost his job. Art Wallace, he was doing our plumbing at the time and one day I just, I broke down. I told him our situation and he just listened. And then one Monday morning, I got a call from him saying that a, a shop was looking to hire someone for the back. And I was so happy. That's it. I'm just glad that we live in a place where neighbors help neighbors. Thank you. Lastly, uh, I'd like to give the floor to Greg Knox, a, a man who served this community for over 25 years. Greg. Thank you, Ben. You know, I thought a lot, thought a lot about what I wanted to say today, what I should say today. But in all honesty, I could only, uh, could only think of one story. One story that sums up what this is all about, what this neighborhood rehab project is all about. It's a story about a man. A man who lost everything and everyone that he loved or he cared about. Man who lived on the streets or in some kind of rundown housing all his life. A man because of the pain and the circumstances in his life. He turned to drinking a bottle of vodka a day. And through all of that, he fought back. He fought back and battled his alcoholism. He even became a mentor to others. And he was such an influence at the rehab clinic. They named a, uh, an award after him, a mentoring award. It's called the Devon Award. You know, I know, I, I know Joe would normally, he wouldn't want me 
up here talking about him. And he sure wouldn't want to be up here having to talk. But when I asked him if it would be all right, he said to me, if it causes others to get on board, if it helps just one person to change, then he, he was all for it. Ben, I, uh, I know you wanted me to talk about my service, my time on the force. I, uh, I just think this might be a good time to hear from Joe, if that's okay with you. Joe? One of the things they teach you in uh, alcohol counseling is, is the power of forgiveness. I'm here to apologize. Whenever I drank, it's like all the, the pain and the hurt went away, but all that left was the anger. So I want to apologize to all the people who, who tried to help me, but I wouldn't listen. I want to apologize to all the people I hurt. All the people me and Johnny hurt. I want to apologize to the whole city for having to put up with me all the time. <laughs> Ira, sir, I want to apologize to you. When Johnny died, I lost the last member of my family and the only one that cared for me. I feel the hole in my broken heart with, with booze, and disdain for everyone else, because if they were hateable, well, that, that made us equal. <sighs> Sir, I'm the reason he was driving that night. I'm the reason he took his eyes off the road in that one moment. I wish I could go back. Change things. Maybe he'd still be here. I wish I didn't have to live with the memory of that night. But I do. And so do you. So do you. I'm sorry you were robbed of that innocent little girl because of me. You have every right to be angry at me. But what me and Johnny did as wrong as it was doesn't mean that these people should have to suffer just, just because they're poor or homeless. Please, don't take your anger at me, not on them. Thank you. There's recently been some serious complaints filed with the city and uh, even a petition started about what we're trying to do. My hope tonight is to plead with whoever filed those complaints or signed that petition to reconsider. 
The deadline to cease is tomorrow, which happens to be a Saturday. And if I or anyone else show up, we could be facing some serious consequences. I hope that the words of the people who spoke tonight have opened your eyes and allowed you to see that the spirit of great organizations like the Golden Trader Society, which sought true community, live on in the Neighborhood Rehab Project. I appreciate you letting us crash your meeting tonight. If anybody would like to help, I'll be at the Golden Peaks Mobile Home Park, 8 a.m. sharp, tool belt in hand. Thank you. Man, Marie, it is crazy. I got back to the office today. I had to have at least 20 voicemails from officers who wanted to come help out, and I've got more coming on the way. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. <laughs> Guys, it just means so much to us that y'all are here today. I really appreciate you showing up. Ben, Greg, Joe. Joe, last night you opened up a wound I spent years trying to close. I hated you every minute of every day from that night on. You and your brother took my granddaughter from me. I allowed my anger towards you and your brother to spill over on anybody that was close to being like you in any way. I still remember that morning I dropped her off at school. 
I think about it all the time. Do you know what she was staying late to do? Help serve dinner to some elderly folk. I became bitter. And I started to stand for all the things that my father worked so hard to fight against. I'm afraid my father would not be very happy with me so far. Joe, I'm sorry. I allowed my anger to turn into prejudice. But I do want to live up to my father and my granddaughter's example. I do. So, Pastor Ben, On behalf of the Golden Traders Society and myself, uh, as of right now, all the complaints have been dropped. I do have one question. What's that? Can I borrow a hammer? <laughs> Joe, it's not about you or anybody else doing it the way I do. You know, it, it doesn't matter what your thing is, whether it's fixing houses with the neighborhood rehab project or running a food bank out of your house. All that matters is being a good neighbor. I want to do more, that's for sure. I just feel like I have so much to give, you know? Good. We got a lot to do. Let's get the work done.